Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Trade Finder Live. It's great to be back with you all, especially on this Tuesday during trading hours. I love this new format here. With Hello, you. everyone, and welcome back to Trade oh. Finder Live. It's great to be back with I'm you all, on especially on this Tuesday during trading hours. I love Might this have to be muted on the uh, one of the streams. Trade it's great to be back on the wall, especially on this Tuesday Sorry. during training hours. Out there, let him be muted on the uh, one of the streams. All right, and welcome back, everyone. Sorry about that. Nothing like some good old technical difficulties uh, to get this uh, Tuesday started. So, welcome back All right. again, and welcome back, everyone. Uh, Sorry about that. Nothing like some good old technical difficulties uh, to get this uh, Tuesday started. So, welcome back All right. again, and welcome back, uh, everyone. Uh, Sorry. Alrighty, and third time's the charm. Uh, that's actually a, um, a pillar of trading that Rob has, and um, also something that I um, I personally uh, feel just kind of uh, comes up in life quite often for me. It's uh, there's a story behind that, but I don't want to digress too much, so maybe it'll come up some other time. So welcome officially, everyone. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, it's always uh, something in this virtual digital world we're in. But we appreciate your patience and it is exciting to get to be back with you as i was saying previously uh it's great to be back during live trading hours with rob i love this new format i love being able to uh, have the real-time analysis real-time data and of course interact with you all during this time so thank you for joining us uh, first and foremost we do have the disclosure disclaimer agreement that we have to cover for uh, each of our sessions and essentially the main thing to take away from it is that we are not licensed investment advisors in the united states so nothing is to be taken as personal investment advice we have this available on our website so please feel free uh, to read this in detail at your leisure there or take a screenshot of it now if you like but that's the main point to take away and um, from there on we will um, lead into uh, the rundown as you can see on the screen ryan has just provided for us so uh, very excited to get into uh, today's chat lots of exciting topics to discuss coming off of last week and of course going into the uh, later days of this week and so the market's having some follow through to the downside from yesterday and that was following the ism manufacturing survey uh, it showed a return in uh, the growth sector and uh, i'm sure um, rob will be talking about tesla and their auto shipments everything going on there today so uh, let's go ahead and bring the man of the man of the hour who we're all here for we've waited long enough so mr rob roy how you doing Good, Zach. How are you? Happy Tuesday to you. Yeah, third time's a charm. We got it going this time. So, uh, all good. All, all good. Uh, so, we'll uh, we'll jump right into the market here. Uh, you, uh, everybody, I'm sure, knows uh, that we're having a, uh, a down uh, day today. And uh, as you mentioned, Zach, uh, it's follow through from yesterday uh, on the back of that uh, ISM manufacturing report that showed a reading above 50. 
Uh, for those of you that may not be familiar, 50 is the key level. Anything above 50 indicates growth or expansion in the economy, at least in the manufacturing sector. Anything below 50 indicates contraction. And I think this was the first time in seven months uh, that we showed growth. So that's kind of spooking the market as far as uh, uh, if the economy is reheating up, then perhaps that puts off uh, the rate cuts, uh, especially that uh, first one that everyone was expecting in June. Uh, so we're down to about a 50% chance of a June rate cut. And um, you know, Chairman Powell kind of calmed the markets when he still said, oh yeah, I think we'll have three. Um, I think people are kind of wondering, is that actually gonna happen? Uh, is it still gonna happen as the first one in June? Uh, what's gonna go on there? So we're having just a little bit of a, uh, a correction. We put the 10 day moving average on, you can see that we are trading at least now. Uh, and this is fun doing these during live hours below the 10 day moving average. So that'll be something to watch into the close. But even more important, I think the key level to watch into the close is gonna be this 520 level. Uh, that's the area that's been support and resistance for a while. You can see that we were kind of trading up to it there throughout March. We broke above it. We were holding above it, uh, but now we're back below it again. So where we close today, I think, is really key. If we can close back above 520, then it's no harm, no foul on the SPY. But if we close below it, it's where can we go? Uh, and the next level, I think, would be that big round number around 500. Uh, and so that's, yeah, that's a little bit of a yikes thing, uh, but we haven't had a 2% correction and I think a record amount of time, I forget the exact uh, amount of months that it's been. Uh, so uh, it's been a while uh, since the market has had a correction. Is that what's going on or is this just a momentary blip? Either one of those scenarios is possible, uh, but it is keyed on uh, the fact that uh, we had, uh, the uh, higher than expected ISM manufacturing report. Market seemed okay on Friday. We had that PCE report. Zach, you and I had talked about how interesting it was that a big uh, Fed inflationary report was coming out on a holiday, but that was right in line, uh, basically. And so the futures were up uh, big Sunday night. They came back down, as we talked about in our EWO Trader Live session yesterday. Uh, that's for our uh, uh, EWO Trader subscribers. So now we have two. Uh, events for our uh, EwoTrader.com sur uh, subscribers. Uh, we have the Monday live show, and then we also have uh, the Thursday night insiders meeting. So uh, lots of opportunity to chat about the markets. But uh, just to finish off here with the S&P, the close is going to be key with that 520 level. And if we close below it, then we'll be looking for, you know, all the rules. If you've been watching, uh, follow through. We have a follow through day, confirmation day tomorrow. If we do, then yeah, I think we have to be looking at that 500 level and let's not forget, forget this gap right there at 500 that hasn't been filled yet. So lots of things to see uh, play out uh, throughout the rest of the week and Thursday night show, uh, we should certainly have a lot of information. Now here's where the action is uh, right now uh, is in uh, interest rates. So here's the TNX and you can see that we had a big spike up in rates yesterday that coincided with the market going down. A little bit of follow through today, as you can see, if I put the Elliott Wave button on, uh, look at the relabeling here. Now I said that I thought the chart was gonna relabel. Let's go back in time. And by the way, uh, just a reminder on the software uh, here, this is from the hub organization, hubb.com. Uh, this is still the legacy version, but uh, the live version is in beta testing. I will be using that next week uh, and moving forward, and we'll be able to watch things unfold live. If you haven't gone and gotten it, go get it. Uh, it's free. Uh, there's nothing to download onto your computer. It's web-based. Uh, and so uh, talking about these things, we'll watch them play out live. So make sure you have that. You can follow along uh, with my charts, you're learning about early wave, et cetera. But you can see that we had this five wave to the downside pattern here on the TNX. Uh, and we were right here around uh, the wave four. I uh, mentioned that I didn't see a scenario where we went down to that five and I expected this chart to relabel and it did. And this is this is Yikesville here. Um, the, not only did it relabel, uh, but now we have a wave three to the upside uh, in rates. And that's not good for the market moving forward. I mentioned in the live show yesterday that it didn't seem like um, this was going to 
play out well if we broke above this area uh, around uh, 430 uh, as far as rates moving higher. Uh, and uh, how far can it go? Let's hope that this wave five projection and quick reminder here, these are projections. This does not mean that we're going to have a wave four down uh, immediately uh, on rates. That's if the wave four were to start. That's where we could find support before moving higher. But when you're in a wave three, this uh, algorithm likes and is programmed exactly as the algorithm was written by Ralph Nelson Elliott, likes the 10 year up around 4.5, 4.6%. Uh, let's just hope that's as far as we go. We don't want to see rates come up and threaten anything up above here, or I think we have a more substantial correction in the equities markets. There was Fed speak from Governor Meister was out this morning saying that sees no rush to cut rates and that inflation hasn't really changed much. I'm not sure what he's looking at. Uh, inflation has certainly come down. Now, it's not at their 2% rate. It's still at 28 But how can he say it hasn't changed much? I just, I don't know. One of these Fed governors, it's such a different Fed world now than it was back in the days of Alan Greenspan when none of the FOMC members spoke but Greenspan. Um, and we always joked about, and I had a cartoon I used to show in uh, live seminars, uh, uh, Fed speak, where it showed Greenspan and a bunch of gobbledygook coming out of his mouth in a little, um, you know, uh, a balloon type thing there, because you could never understand what he was talking about. And he liked it that way. A whole different world now. But anyway, back to rates. Uh, we got to keep an eye on how far rates go. And that's going to pressure the equities market. Uh, on one aspect, you could say, well, maybe that's what we needed to get some rotation away from those MAG-7 stocks uh, and broaden the, um, the uh, scope of the markets a bit. That's never a bad thing to have a broadening rally. Those stocks have been driving the market. Uh, and then we look at the dollar uh, and uh, excuse me, there's uh, uh, the VIX. We'll get to that in a second. But here's the dollar. Uh, and it's starting to break above the 104 level as well. I don't understand that with the amount of debt that we have here uh, in the U.S., uh, other than the fact that there's concern that rates could go higher. Uh, and if rates continue to go higher, obviously that would be supportive of the dollar. So when you see that relabeling uh, on the TNX to a wave three, uh, the dollar did relabel. Um, I believe we talked about that last week, which I expected as well. It has not relabeled into a wave three to the upside like the TNX, but we'll keep an eye on that. But as rates continue higher, it's going to be supportive of the dollar. And this is a double whammy for the equities market. If we start getting back up into this range here uh, on the dollar, that hurts uh, companies' profits uh, because of the exchange rate. It goes right to the bottom line. You know, we have an international global economy now. Uh, and so, so many companies deal overseas, sell overseas. Uh, um, business is uh, uh, multinational now. And uh, paying the exchange rates with a stronger dollar uh, is not helpful for them. So that's something to keep an eye on as well. So we have some caution flags uh, here. Now, all this could change, you know, in a week or two, if we start to get uh, some tamer economic numbers. But if the economy is going to stay this strong and inflation is not going to come down anymore, the Fed's not going to cut rates. Uh, there's just no reason for them to. So if the new phrase, because, you know, the media always has to have a phrase, is inflation is sticky. Um, <laughs> um, but if inflation stays sticky and the economy stays strong, there's not going to be a rate cut in June. Uh, and that's what the market is worried about right now. So here's that chart of the VIX showing that we are moving back to the upside. We had a little spike up yesterday, which brought us right to the lower end of this uh, bottom trend line from this channel that we had here, uh, where we were just kind of creeping to the upside. Uh, and so we got right to the bottom line yesterday, the lower trend line of uh, higher, uh, lower, high, higher lows, excuse me, in the uh, VIX. Uh, but now we're back in that channel. Now we have to wonder, are we breaking out of the upper side, uh, which is the higher highs? So um, yeah, there's just lots to talk about, lots to worry about. Uh, moving forward, we will get to Tesla, as Zach mentioned. Uh, we've been waiting for their delivery numbers. They came out today, so we'll talk about those. Uh, but let's look at the other markets first. Uh, we take a look at the Dow, uh, and uh, it looked like 
maybe uh, some people were kind of expecting this. You can see we had a little bit of a vertical spike here, some rotation uh, into the Dow. We had it back here at the end of the year where we moved above that 45 degree angle, a steeper run, if you will, uh, expecting this to happen sooner. I did. Uh, I've talked about that. I thought we would be seeing this kind of stuff uh, before the first week of April, uh, but uh, it didn't happen. And so we kind of leveled off, went a little bit below 45 degrees here uh, on the wave three within the Dow. And then we had a big move up, but the Dow is uh, coming to uh, the market pressures from today as well. Uh, so let's look at the 10 day moving average on the Dow. And you can see we're below that also. Uh, perhaps we come down and test that 50 day moving average. Uh, but the support line, the big support line is at 380 on the Dow. So we got to watch tomorrow to see if there's follow through below this 10 day moving average on the Dow as well. The Qs, uh, you would imagine they're not performing too well today with rates uh, moving to the upside the way they are. Uh, and so you can see we had this big run to the upside uh, and now we're going to correct a little bit here. And as I said uh, earlier, maybe this is needed. Maybe this is going to be a long term positive for the markets with the fact that uh, if rates are going to go up, money is going to rotate out of those mag seven stocks. It's going to find other places to go. Rates are going to have to turn and come back to the downside. And we're going to need some reports uh, that show the economy weakening a lot and inflation coming down to reignite uh, that argument of a June rate cut. Those things are going to have to happen. And if they don't, uh, it's going to be difficult for those big tech stocks. So perhaps this wave five is right. Uh, we've been waiting to see if the wave five would relabel to a three and match the S&P. Uh, it hasn't done so. So the algorithm has been right so far uh, on the queues as far as perhaps that was uh, giving us a signal that uh, we were running out of steam on those big tech stocks. So uh, looking at the Russell, now, a lot of people, as I mentioned all the time, look at the Russell since it's the small caps for an idea of risk. Uh, and we got above 210, but we couldn't hold it. Uh, we didn't close above the 210 level, uh, coming right back down here uh, on the, uh, uh, that was the uh, 28th of March, uh, where we traded above 210, but closed right on it, uh, came down yesterday and followed through to the downside today. So it doesn't look like we're creating a new uh, trading range. You know, the IAWM loves to trade in trading ranges. Uh, we had this long-term one from 190 to 210. Then we went down to 170 to 190. And we got back up above here. And it looks like perhaps uh, we might be heading back down towards that 190 level. We'll see what happens when it hits the 50-day moving average, which is that royal blue line uh, around this big round number of 200. Can that hold? So that's going to be the key to watch here on the IWM. <clears throat> Can we hold 200? Can we hold that 50-day moving average? Or are we destined uh, uh, to go down and test 190? Uh, but uh, 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 underperforming on the small caps, even from uh, the S&P, at least so far today. And notice that wave five went right to the 61.8% FIB level. You wonder why we talk about LA wave uh, and look at these FIB levels. Uh, it's because it works. I've been doing this for 27 years, and uh, I'm going to trade with what I think uh, gives me the best advantage, the edge, they call it, uh, and uh, Ellie Waves, where it's at for me, along with some uh, confirming uh, indicators. So, yeah, uh, trouble to take a look at um, as far as the international markets. Let's take a quick look uh, at the two ones that have been performing so well, uh, EWG and the INDA. Uh, and you can see Germany uh, is coming back a little bit as well. Uh, so uh, we got almost to 100% extension there on the wave five. We only had a 38.2% wave four. So that was a very extended wave five. We look at the 10 day moving average. We're below the 10 day moving average there on the EWG. Let's see how India is performing on the INDA. A little bit of a tick down, but not too bad. We came down, had a really nice test of the 50-day moving average here, uh, held that area above 50 where that wave three high was. That's about as classic as it gets as far as a test. Testing the 50-day moving average, testing the wave three high. It held them, took back off. Now we're back up at a little bit of resistance here. We got to break above 52 if the INDA or the Nifty, whatever you like to look at for the market in India, 
uh, can break above that and, and continue higher. Uh, there was some news out today that uh, they're really challenging uh, China uh, as far as uh, uh, international manufacturing, and uh, they may overtake Vietnam. We'll see uh, how that plays out, but uh, looks pretty good uh, as far as uh, where we are on the INDA. Uh, let's look at the two triangles. We had a triangle in the EWA uh, with uh, uh, Australia uh, and just kind of still there uh, with this uh, triangle formation, not the greatest triangle in the world, but uh, it's still a triangle. I don't really like all of this open space here. I prefer it when there's more touches of the line uh, when you draw the triangles, but we haven't broken out of the triangle, at least not yet down under, and we'll see if that changes over the next couple of trading days. Uh, and then uh, Canada, uh, we had this uh, uh, kind of ascending triangle here where we just bumped our head against 38 and then had all these um, higher lows here. So there was a nice ascending triangle. Uh, also hasn't broken out of that triangle yet. And just a quick reminder, doesn't matter whether it's a descending, symmetrical or ascending triangle, all triangles can break either direction. Uh, don't buy into the rhetoric that an ascending triangle breaks higher and a descending triangle breaks lower. Uh, I've done extensive research on triangles. It just means a breakout's coming. Um, any triangle is uh, revealing consolidation and you can move either direction. So uh, that gets us uh, kind of caught up on where we are with uh, our markets, uh, the international markets, et cetera. Uh, so let's go through uh, and take a look at our case studies uh, that we currently have open. Uh, ROL, obviously they're probably going to be struggling with the market today. That one we looked at back on uh, March 19th, and we thought maybe we would get uh, an extension up to the upper end of that tap box, uh, and uh, it started to. Now you can see we went up. Uh, we didn't quite make it to the top end of the tap box. We go back and see that was up around 49, uh, and we made it almost to 48, uh, and now we're back, but holding in there okay. Actually, when we look at the 10-day moving average, uh, we are below it. Uh, if you're following along with this one and you want to stay bullish, then uh, the, the level down here that it needs to hold, if it wants to try to have an extended wave five, is down at 44. So uh, we have the 50-day moving average right there, a lot of support. So if this is something that you like, uh, you can stay uh, with this one as long as it stays above that 44 range. Uh, we are getting a rollover on the ADX. It didn't quite make it back up to 40. Uh, and so that's not a good thing. Uh, we have the positive directional indicator going down, the negative going up. Uh, so it needs to catch itself uh, if it's going to hang in there. It's doing okay today, just down a tenth of a percent. Uh, so that's not really a big deal. Uh, so it, it's showing some strength to the market, even though it's showing a little bit of weakness in general. Um, but it's outperforming where the actual market is, uh, but 44 is the key level to watch there. Uh, and then uh, LRN uh, stride that we looked at uh, last week, uh, and uh, we were looking to see uh, if we were going to be able to hold that 60 level and move higher. We're still above 60, so that's the key level right here. Uh, you want to see if we can continue there. Uh, we take a look at the DMI on this one as well. Same exact picture uh, as we have on ROL. Uh, rolling over a bit, uh, the positive coming down, the negative going up. Uh, when this kind of thing occurs, I pay more attention to the lower line, the uh, the red line here, the negative directional indicator, because uh, sometimes you can have what they call a buyer strike. Maybe the buyers just step away, but are the sellers um, feeling emboldened? Are they stepping up? Uh, so you can have a scenario where the positive directional indicator goes down, but the negative directional indicator doesn't go up. Uh, and I feel better about those scenarios as far as staying long. Uh, but when you have the negative going up and the positive coming down, uh, that could be an early indication that, hey, this is over. But look at the amount of support we have at 60. Uh, so that still stays in place. Uh, if we can hold above 60 and try to move back to the upside, that's also where the 50 day moving average is. So this one, um, if we break 60, then it's probably a good short because uh, there's so much support there at 60. And if we were to break down below that, then you have to start taking that gap into effect. So that one could be one, I call that a flip, where 
uh, you go from one pattern uh, to another um, and uh, you go from potentially long to short. Uh, but as long as it stays above 60, that's where the support is. And we can perhaps see something uh, continue long here. Uh, but if not, then yeah, we have to take a look at uh, a breakdown uh, coming down to fill that gap. There's a whole bunch more support uh, right down here, uh, as you can see at 45. Uh, and because of the fact that we gapped up and ran up, there's really not a resistance on the way down. That's why I say that could be a, a good short if it doesn't hold 60. So that's just speculation. We'll let it play out and see uh, whether or not it holds uh, in that 60 range uh, or not. Uh, but uh, that's what's going on with our previous case studies. I did want to show you something uh, that I thought was really uh, important. Uh, this was an alert that we did uh, on our uh, uh, website, evotrader.com, for alert subscribers, where we send out um, alerts for entries, exits, and any adjustments. So here's an example of one that we just closed out yesterday on AEM. Uh, you can see this was in our AI-based impulse strategy, uh, which is we have now a AI infused our directional strategy. Uh, we've been doing it for, uh, this is the seventh month now. We haven't had a losing month yet. I'm not saying it'll never have a losing month, but it hasn't yet. So six straight months of gains is pretty impressive. You wanna learn more about it, uh, go to evotrader.com. Uh, and you can see here uh, on the entry, we have all this information on every single alert that goes out, uh, including the chart. And so here's what we were looking at. This. Uh, break to the upside here above uh, 56. Uh, and there was the AI target. The AI actually gives us a target now. Uh, and we had a high but supportive DMI. I actually did a pro trader tip on this. Uh, it'll be on YouTube uh, where the ADX can come up. And if it rolls over, like we saw uh, on uh, ROL and uh, LRN, uh, that's a different scenario. Sometimes the ADX can come up and just go sideways. Uh, and that indicates continued strength. Uh, but in this case, the target was right around 62. We exited the trade yesterday, as I said, which were just three days in this trade. Uh, and you're probably aware that gold has been making new highs. It's all over the um, financial networks. So this was a play on gold. Uh, and then we had boom, 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 three straight days. So time that one absolutely beautifully, uh, three days. Uh, to the upside, two gap days. And when you have this kind of scenario, even though we didn't quite make it to 62, which is where our target was, uh, when you have these kind of days, uh, they infuse implied volatility, IV, into the call options, and you get an opportunity to take advantage of that. It juices the calls, if you will. You could have had a scenario where we went sideways for a bit and still ran up to 62, and the calls would be worth less. Um, now, AEM is down today with the market, but that scenario could kind of play out. So we timed this perfect. You can see that we were able, and these are actual fill prices. These aren't hypothetical prices. We uh, show what we're actually filled on or what we know our subscribers were filled on at 225 uh, on these June 65 calls. And if you look it up right now, they're trading at $2. So that would have been 25 cents coming right off the top. Uh, if we hadn't to close that out yesterday. So we nailed that one perfectly on the close. Don't get them all right like that, but that was a good one. And we generated over 40% in three days. Uh, so that's the uh, power uh, of what the AI brings to our directional based strategy. Uh, so you can see it, it never was below the zero line. This is our mark to market graph, which marks the uh, pricing every single day of where the position lies. Uh, and it just went straight up. Like it when that happens, love these real quick short ones. They don't all work out that way. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer because the AI does take into some fundamental data uh, along the lines, but uh, pretty darn impressive uh, on that move. So I wanted to share that with you. Uh, and if you uh, uh, have interest in um, having a, a service like that, once again, go to uh, evotrader.com and you can find all of our portfolios there. Uh, we also have uh, breakout portfolios uh, and uh, that's for these triangles and uh, one that we have currently and we've closed down a few already, uh, but here we have one and this is the beauty of the triangles. 
is you can capture a downside breakout. Look at that move uh, on CNC. That one may come off uh, before the close, but you can see that um, triangle that was formed there. Uh, it's profitable. That's a big gap and a big move to the downside. Uh, and so we have uh, what we call a level three, where you have uh, the AI uh, impulse strategy, these triangles for breakouts, uh, and then we also have a time strategy for stuff that uh, goes sideways. So we got you covered in all different market uh, conditions. So big move down there, nice breakout out of that one. Now let's see if we can find something uh, today to take a look at. Obviously going to be a little bit uh, concerned about putting on anything to the long side. Let's see if there is anything. Oh, well, there are uh, three results. That surprises me after yesterday. Our, our friend Google. Uh, I think uh, um, we actually, uh, Zach, I think you actually posted this uh, as an idea on the website. And that's another cool thing. Reddit just went um, uh, public with their IPO where they have a community of people to chat. We have the same thing or Hub has the same thing uh, on their uh, new platform that I was talking about where you can post your own ideas and other people look at them. They can give you their thoughts and it gives a rating and you vote and all it's really cool. Uh, all these features that are on it. Uh, and so uh, there was the move higher uh, in Google yesterday. Uh, as far as today, um, Google is uh, is kind of staying status quo, pulling back a little bit, uh, not too bad. See if I can give you the, uh, uh, the look at it today uh, with where we are uh, on Google. Um, and there you can see that uh, it's recovered off of the lows so far, uh, trading at the high of the day. We're gonna wanna see whether or not we get follow through uh, on this uh, with this break above 155, uh, which is key. Uh, Google hasn't quite followed through. They had some problems back here uh, on the AI side, but perhaps people are giving them the benefit of the doubt that they could be getting their act together. But we need to see follow through on this break above 155 from yesterday. Uh, a break back below 155, I think you have to exit that um, and, uh, and, and get out of that. Um, but uh, that's where um, uh, Google is trading at this point in time. Let's see uh, what else we have. Uh, Tetra Tech, um, not really familiar with this one. Um, and we'll see what that one's doing today as well. It followed along with Google and had a nice day yesterday. Gosh, that's a good looking DMI there. Uh, let's see where TTEK is uh, today, uh, and that's going to be the cool thing about uh, utilizing the uh, uh, the live version. Um, it's kind of hanging in there as well. Uh, I think at this point in time, we need to see a break of that wave three at 190. That could be one to keep on a watch list. Right now, it looks like we might have a doji, but that could change uh, into the close with where the market goes into the close, but a doji right underneath 190, indecision, right at resistance. Uh, I'm not sure um, how we feel about that one. Uh, we'll have to see where that closing price is. Uh, that could mean it's getting ready to break higher uh, or it's going to uh, fall apart. Now there's a ATKR. Let's see what that one's doing today. Uh, that looks awfully good. Um, See what uh, exchanges we're on. We'll go to the NYSE and take a look at ATKR. Um, well, it's pulling back today. Uh, so let's see if it's affecting the DMI a little bit. Yeah, see that here's the issue. I wouldn't have felt so bad uh, if we didn't have this uh, negative directional indicator uh, moving higher. Uh, so moving to the upside. Uh, here, if we uh, continue higher, um, it would need to see uh, these two directional indicators revert back. I don't like the fact that the ADX is ticking down, showing a little bit of strength uh, in this move. If it holds the 10 day moving average, okay, we got a little bit overbought. We came back, tested the 10 day moving average. That could be okay. But I think we need to see where we close here uh, and what happens tomorrow on this one. So, uh, I would put this one on a watch list. So I would say ATKR uh, is a watch list uh, candidate uh, from today. So let's go ahead and add that. Uh, bless you, whoever that was. 
um, but uh, ATKR uh, for uh, four two uh, is going to be a, a watch list candidate. Uh, so we're going to go with uh, uh, we're going to follow along with Zach's idea that showed up on the search uh, with Google, um, and we're going to put an e uh, asterisk uh, beside this, uh, meaning that we need to stay closed above one fifty five today. So we're going to put Google here. Um, if, if we are Thursday night, then, you know, we might be looking at some downside trades, which would actually be fun to see some downside trades uh, for a change. But we're going to say Google up to 165, but with an asterisk on if we close above 155 today. So I'm making a note of that so that we can uh, be accurate next week. Uh, um, or two. So you're going to watch that one into the close uh, and see if uh, if we can hold here. Uh, maybe Google plays some catch up with NVIDIA and some of the other stocks. Uh, and then before we uh, go to the q and imagine this one was probably going to come into the Q&A anyway, but let's update you on Tesla. Uh, and um, they came out as expected with disappointing uh, I've been mentioning, I don't know where the upside catalyst could be for Tesla. You can see we're in a wave five to the downside with the scary part here uh, of how important holding this 160 level is. Uh, and if we go back in time, uh, we can just condense the chart down a bit and go back. And you can see that back down here, 160 held uh, back in the um, same time frame, springtime of last year. So it's interesting that we're back down here again uh, after trading much higher throughout the year. Uh, so looking down uh, through this area uh, around 100, um, you can see that uh, uh, we're right there. Um, you know, it's it's a Katie bar the door scenario if we move down uh, from uh, this 160 level. So it becomes a pretty good short if 160 doesn't hold. Now, when they came out today with their disappointing deliveries, uh, where is the bullish case scenario for Tesla? Uh, it, it, you know, only uh, if it holds right here above this 160 level. Then we have to get back above the 10-day moving average. Then we have to get back above 180. And I'm not even sure that's enough. I think we need to get back above 200. Uh, before you actually start looking long Tesla. We talked about this a week or so ago that uh, we had a tradable bounce here from 160 up to test 180. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, and we rolled over and came back. Uh, and so it couldn't break above uh, 180 with a follow through. That's why follow through days are so important. We didn't have one. Uh, and then we have more resistance there uh, at 200. So it still looks to me like Tesla is more on the short side than the long, um, or if you're a big fan of Tesla, you just uh, kind of sit and wait. Uh, but I think you have to let it show us something now uh, without going long. The, the tradable bounce trade is over. Uh, and so we come down here and we see what happens. If we break below 160, I think there'll be some profit taking uh, and you could see uh, an accelerated move lower. The wave five uh, projection here is down around 140. I would hope it would hold at 140, but it, that's in the middle of nowhere uh, on Tesla. So um, I, I think that would be nail biting time uh, in hoping that it held 140 if we break below 160. Uh, but there is uh, uh, at least the algorithm likes around 140 uh, as a possibility uh, to move lower there. So uh, watch 160. So if it breaks below 160, I think you have a short down to at least 140, uh, and then we'll see if it can even hold there. Uh, but I wouldn't, uh, you know, it's tempting just to put that out as a, a case study consideration here, um, but we can't until it breaks 160 because that is support uh, and it has history there. Uh, it's got to break that uh, before it uh, uh, becomes a short candidate. Uh, I think, but um, certainly nothing uh, to the long side that I can see uh, on uh, Tesla. 
So um, uh, just wanted to give you a brief rundown of how we go through uh, and post ideas here. And Zach, you should have some familiarity with this one uh, since uh, you actually posted it as your idea. You were ahead of the game here. Uh, so I'll let you take the screen back and show the folks exactly how they can go in uh, to that new hub platform uh, and post an idea. So let's go ahead and post that Google idea um, and uh, just uh, put in the commentary uh, as long as it closes above uh, 155 uh, on today. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. So as we can see, folks, I just logged into the Hub Platform dashboard there. And um, we are now here at the home page. You get to see a menu jumping off point of everything that this platform has to offer. And um, we encourage you to dive in at your leisure, explore all the different facets. Um, there's been, as we have been announcing, multiple updates and continuous updates that will uh, be made in the future here. Um, so definitely take some time to just dive in and just click around, uh, especially through the themes here. I think this is one of the um, coolest parts about the overall platform is all of these different sections and how you can uh, really categorize things down. Uh, so um, if you want to just go by a general sector or something that's interests you, you can click on whatever that may be, whatever that topic may be, and find different ideas around that, which might uh, aid in your idea. So anyhow, uh, to post an idea, we just hit this little light bulb over here on the left side on this left uh, toolbar. And so we have both the option to create an idea and post. So the option to create an idea essentially is you feel confident that this is something that you would paper trade because essentially these ideas are paper trades. They're real trades that you're not having any real capital, real risk involved with, but the idea is a set time frame, and you're expecting it to set a target price within um, that amount of time. So if you're confident and you, you really feel um, that this is something that you would be very close to trading in you know, reality, then that's when you want to post an idea. However, if you have something that's a bit more speculative, you need a bit more time to see some things play out. You know, there might be some external macro factors or just uh, you need to see some confirmation in the pattern then um, you might create it as a post just to kind of have it as a point of reference. And then if it does happen to play out in your favor, you can switch that to an idea. Um, so we'll go ahead and go into the idea here. And uh, Rob, what's, uh, what's your title going to be? Um, Google potentially to 165. And I think you need to put that word potentially in there um, since we're, we're going to post it. And he has to close. That's contingent on it closing above 155 today. Okay, so what do we want the title out of that? Sorry. Google potentially to 165. 165. Google. All right. Yeah. Perfect. And then we will uh, come back and make this nice and pretty after. So to search a symbol, just type in whatever symbol you're looking for here. Obviously want to make sure that you're on the right exchange. So we'll go with NASDAQ there, target price of 165, and our time frame you see here is broken down into weeks. You can go to a month, quarter, two quarters, and the full year. Now, if um, it needs to be something more specific, you have that option here in custom and can just pick the specific calendar day um, that you would like. So, Rob, what, what are we thinking here? Uh, if it if it does go as planned, it should get there within let um let's see whether or not we want to go one month or two months um yeah let's well it says july uh on the wave five so let's give it three months three months all right well that works that's already uh out there for us so that's an easy one and uh we'll do to be continued all right so confirm and I will be going back to make this nice and pretty with all the info Rob provided us during his analysis there. And um, we will um, go back over to you, Mr. Roy. All right. Um, so uh, let's uh, go to uh, the Q&A, Zach, and let's see what uh, folks want to say about uh, our uh, questions that they may have. I'm sure there may be a few with uh, kind of a uh, shaky market today. Oh, absolutely. You know, we always have tons of questions, tons of very well thought out questions at that. So um, let's get some in. 
uh, with the time remaining. So um, did we talk about the metals? I did do a bit of multitasking, so I'm going to preface this by saying there might be a few that um, don't be upset if I uh, didn't catch that you went, um, went over them already. It's been a, my hands have been busy this uh, webinar. Yeah, no, um, I just briefly mentioned it with AEM um, that gold was breaking out. Uh, I think gold is a bit vertical right now. Uh, you can see it's right there in the wave three. So it's come off the highs today, uh, moving back down. It's a bit overbought, um, but I think that that, you know, could just be a, a pause. It needs to, you know, I don't like it when things go vertical. Uh, it, it, when vertically up goes up, often comes vertically back down. Let's hope that doesn't happen because I am uh, wanting to see uh, some movement in the metals. We've been waiting for it for a long time. We're finally getting it uh, from March and now into April. But I just wish you wouldn't do this vertical stuff. I would feel more comfortable uh, if gold would do that uh, and take off in the 45 degree angle rather than these uh, vertical moves. So I think right now uh, kind of got to be a little patient there. Uh, on GLD, uh, just because it's a bit uh, overbought right now. But sometimes these uh, corrective moves from these vertical overbought conditions uh, don't last very long. Um, so you're, you're going to want to watch and see how we handle 210. Um, I'd hate to see it come all the way back to uh, 205, but it might because that's where the 10-day moving average is. In fact, I would say if you saw GLD at 205, that's probably a pretty good entry, um, but it may not give us that that much of a corrective move, but that's where the 10 day moving average is. And then since we said metals plural, let's look at SLV as well, because this is the one that I'm uh, really interested in. Uh, and you can see that SLV uh, is giving us the follow through uh, breakout. Now I was concerned yesterday because we broke above 23 uh, and, we, uh, and we came back and closed underneath it. Um, but there is the issue with the 23 level on SLV. It's been massive resistance. Uh, it needs to play some catch up to gold. Uh, we've got a nice little zigzag pattern here. So I'm kind of uh, looking for, I uh, actually hope it pulls back into the close. Look at that, right exactly at uh, that 38.2% Fib corrective level. And then the tap box is right in between these two FIB levels, which is interesting. Uh, so 61.8 would be the first target. So a bit above 24. And then potentially, depending on how the DMI looks, um, it looks pretty strong right now, uh, an extension up to the 100% level above 25. So uh, watching uh, what happens into the close on uh, SLV, uh, as I said, gold, it looks like needs to maybe break and rest a little bit. A uh, tiny bit overbought on SLV today, but not as much as gold is. Uh, and I think that uh, um, that's where the first trade might be on the metals SLV uh, and then wait for GLD. And in fact, that probably um, you know looks like a really good idea uh, to post on the website uh, SLV there. So. Um, that might actually even go out to an alert for our alert subscribers at evotrader.com. Just couldn't do it yesterday because it couldn't close above 23. Uh, but if it's going to take off and run now um, and close above 23 today, then we have a whole different, whole different story there. So pretty interested in SLV, interested in gold as well. I just think that it, it needs to calm a bit. But sometimes the metals they they can take off in those runs and and go crazy. Very well. All righty. They, they can indeed. Let's go over to QCOM for uh, SP. Oh, uh, they used to say, yeah, we uh, used to trade that stock all the time um, going back. Uh, and it's, it's holding in there really well today. Actually, it's down a little bit, but not much. Uh, and uh, let me take that off uh, because we do have a little bit of a triangle here. It's small for Qualcomm, uh, but as I mentioned, oftentimes Elliot always said, you know, don't forget the small triangles. Pay attention to those as well. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's a big triangle or a small one. 
uh, you'll always want to keep an eye on them. And so having that uh, point right at 170, uh, something's going to happen with Qualcomm. It's not a big move. So we're like one, it's about a 10 point move. So it doesn't qualify for a strangle. Uh, and when I look at for those in the volatility strategy, you want a 10 percent forecasted breakout move, 10 percent of the stock price. And so this is 10 points of the movement, but it's a hundred and seventy dollar stock. So we would have wanted a 17 point predicted move. So it's not a big enough breakout to do a strangle. This is more. Let's watch it, see which way it breaks and then trade it directionally from there. Uh, so yeah, that's a good bit of commentary there uh, on this one where you have a well-formed triangle, just not big enough to actually put uh, a strangle on. So uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on Qualcomm and see it's uh, holding in there pretty impressively well today. Um, and we'll just see how uh, uh, deep this uh, correction, um, if more than today goes. You know, we've had these 500 point down days on the Dow here and there and then recovered the next day. So that's why I'm saying we need to see what happens in the market in general tomorrow uh, to see if we continue lower. But uh, yeah, some good ones right off the bat there. Let's keep going. Let's keep it going. Uh, Constantine would like you to look at the ADX on the SPX daily. All right, so um, if we take a look at, and now this is the cash market, right? We look at the S&P. Uh, a lot through the SPY. So this is the actual cash market for the S&P 500. Uh, and if we look at the DMI, um, uh, we have the ADX. There's one of those sideways moves uh, in the ADX that I was referencing earlier. So this gives you an idea of what that looks like when that happens. Uh, so there was just decent strength to this move as the ADX went sideways, but it's kind of rolling over a little bit with today's move as well. So that leads you to believe that we might need to come down and test this 50 day moving average. Um, the negative directional indicator is certainly catching uh, some momentum to the upside, the positive coming down. Now there are times, and here's two examples of it. So gosh, this is a great chart to show some of these things here, where what I call the two lines kiss. Now uh, you can see that the negative directional indicator came up and kissed the, the positive directional indicator, but they never cross. That's why you actually have to see a cross uh, of the two. And then it did it again a couple weeks later where they came together, kissed, and went back the other direction. So there was never a crossover. And note that the positive directional indicator stayed above the negative and we continued higher uh, with relatively decent strength here. Not great strength, but decent strength. Uh, and now we're looking to see is this going to be another kiss or are they going to cross this time? Uh, so when you watch this, uh, if you want to go short, you need to see the actual crossing, not just as they come together. And when you look at that, the temptation is, well, look at that angle. They're going to cross. Well, it looked just like that back here where I drew those arrows and it didn't. So, um, you know, there's still going to be, uh, this is where the caution is on, is it time to short the market? Um, there's still gonna be Fed rate cuts at some point, um, but we're just pushing them out a bit. So maybe we're just kind of repricing things a little bit with uh, the fact that we may have to wait further than the market wanted to on the rate cuts. So uh, this is a perfect example of why you, you, you wanna go short on an ugly day like today, but let these two lines cross over and make a clean break and then that's your indication that, OK, um, maybe we have a little more correction to go uh, and it would be a good a good short. But thanks, Constantine, for asking about that, because I got a chance to um, bring in a lot of points there on how these indicators work, et cetera. So that was good. Yeah, this is a great yeah, Q&A. Constantine's always got uh, great questions. And so let's go over to uh, Ego. What's your ego, Rob? What's your thoughts on Ego? <laughs> Uh, well, we had an alert on this, uh, and you know, of course, now you look at it and say, "Well, we probably got out too early." But then we had AEM, uh, and you always want to be careful about having too many stocks in the same sector uh, in your portfolio. So, having both of them, uh, you know, we may have gotten out of EGO a little bit early, but we had a really nice gain. Never be upset about a gain. 
And then we came back in with AEM. So we were still staying in the gold place. So we were able to take advantage of the move in gold with two different stocks. Um, but this one doesn't look done uh, yet uh, at all. Uh, AEM is pulling back, uh, but EGO uh, is uh, actually moving higher today. So that's kind of interesting. Um, that uh, these two gold plays uh, are outperforming each other, one's outperforming the other one. Uh, but that's the difference between trading the GLD or trading these individual stocks uh, that can have some you know, impact from the miners, et cetera. Um, but uh, that, that's as good as you can ask for uh, on a DMI. Uh, you have the positive directional indicator still going up nicely and the negative directional indicator still going down nicely. Uh, and the ADX going up. Uh, so um, the target price isn't too far away. Now we're at 1476 uh, and we're up around 16. So that, that run could continue. Uh, and I like that better than the move in GLD. It is above a 45 degree angle, but it's not as sharp as the move is in the GLD. Uh, so uh, I think um, um, EGO continues higher. And if gold calms down just for a day or two and gives us another entry, we can look at EGO or uh, AEM. They both came out with very strong AI signals, uh, and that's why we sent them out as alerts. So, uh, yeah, another good one to look at and actually uh, looks, looks poised to continue that move. Uh, the support is down here at 13. That would be a, a pretty big move lower. Uh, I don't think that plays out. Uh, I think that three is not done yet, at least as evident by the uh, DMI. It looks like it wants to continue going. Very well. Thanks, Rob. And so um, there's lots of uh, requests, and um, I know it's uh, what the talking heads would like to call a bloodbath, but um, the cryptos are uh, obviously not too hot right now, hot over the weekend especially, and everyone would like to see Bitcoin. Yeah, um, I uh, didn't show that one earlier. Um, I was uh, uh, going to talk about it, but uh, with the, um, the triangle here, clearly we've had a downside break. And so I did reach out and I always want to try to give you guys the best information I can. And as I mentioned before, um, I I'm not an expert in the crypto world. If there's something that I don't feel I have as much knowledge on, then I'm going to go reach out to the people that I do feel are knowledgeable about it. Uh, I know you look at the crypto space as well a lot, Zach, um, but the person that I reached out to today said that when you're moving into the halving, which we know having whatever uh, is uh, April 18th, and uh, he said the last three times when it's, it's occurred three previous times, there was a dip moving into it every single time. And this is the fourth one. Uh, and so we're having a dip now. He said he would still uh, like to see it go lower. He would like to see it come in around 60,000 on Bitcoin. And if we hit 60,000, uh, then because I think we're at 65 uh, right now. So uh, we're a little bit right in here. So it does look like we're kind of breaking out uh, to the downside of that triangle. Uh, but he would love to see it come down to 60. Uh, I don't know if we go that far. Um, and he doesn't know if it go that far either. He just would love to load up again uh, at 60,000 uh, if that's where Bitcoin uh, comes out of this triangle. But remember, one day doesn't make a breakout. You have to have a follow through or confirmation day. So we'll need to see uh, in the next, and I know it trades 24 seven, but you know we get end of day prints, um, whether or not on the next end of day print, uh, we have follow through here or not. Um, but uh, that was the commentary that uh, I received today, uh, which I was not aware of that the previous three times when the halving happened that we had a dip for it uh, each time. And uh, just to finalize his point, he said right now uh, on his analysis, we are matching exactly what happened on this fourth time, the previous three times, tick for tick. So uh, if you're long the cryptos, um, no, 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 you do, uh, to be, uh, concerned yet. In fact, if you have a position and you have an opportunity to, to add to it, if you saw 60,000, uh, his commentary with that, that would be a great place to add, but, um, you know, just watch it and see what happens from here. If we even get that 
opportunity. But uh, that was his commentary. So happy to share that with you again. I want to give you guys a, the idea here is, uh, is education and information uh, that we're trying our, our best to share uh, from EvoTrader.com. So, um, yeah, if I'm not aware of something, I'm going to go find out, find uh, somebody that is. So, yeah, that's the crypto commentary. Yep, and that's the beauty of the World Wide Web, uh, this digital world that we're in, is that we have so many more resources. And I just want to say I'm so thankful to be able to be in this position and um, uh, interact with you all. And, um, yeah, just be able to learn from you, Rob, and um, also learn from our well-informed subscriber base. This is just something I really, really enjoy and passionate about. So I appreciate everyone that takes the time to attend live. Let's go ahead and um, wrap this session up on a bang with NVIDIA. Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. We actually uh, managed to go a couple of weeks, I think, without looking at NVIDIA because it really wasn't doing anything. So um, it is uh, ticking down a bit. It looks a little tired uh, from this DMI. Now, the concern will be, see, here's another. This is what I was talking about with the ADX going sideways here and has been basically since January. So there was some strength uh, in the rest of this move from the end of January, and now we've gone sideways. If that ADX breaks down below 40, then that tells you that this move is over. Um, we're not there yet, um, and we've got some support right where we are here, uh, right there in the, what is that, 880 level. Uh, so we have support right here at 880 on NVIDIA, even though we're down today. Um, but the key is gonna be, can we hold 880? Uh, and if we don't, then, um, you know, we have to start looking at where's the next area of support. There's a tiny bit below there at 840. Um, so there's a little channel here of support between 840 and 880. If it breaks that, uh, then we have to start looking at this gap getting filled all the way back down at 720. Um, so we're, we're, we're not uh, looking at that yet. That would be where we would look if we broke below 840. Uh, but we're going to have to break below 840 before we get concerned about 720. So the key is going to be, can we hold this little sideways channel here between 840 and 880? Uh, and again, it's going to be, uh, I think, tied to what happens with rates. If rates continue to power higher, it is going to put pressure on NVIDIA, even with all the AI stuff uh, and all those other uh, uh, big mag seven stocks. Um, so the key is going to be watch interest rates. That's going to give you an idea of what's going on with the market in general, uh, et cetera. Uh, and so, yeah, that's a good one to finish on. So there's your channel uh, to look at. Uh, and I uh, just wanted to uh, sign off this one. Thanks for watching. Love doing this stuff during market hours. Get a chance to talk about what's going on in real time. Uh, be showing you the, the real time software here uh, next week, which is going to be an awful lot of fun. Uh, we need to see, just to wrap things up uh, for today, we need to see where the market closes today. And if it stays down, do we get follow through tomorrow? If so, then we probably have a little deeper correction coming. Uh, if not, this could just be one of those one-off days. As I said, we've seen a few of them in the past and recovered right away. Uh, I don't think we're at the point where we're looking for rate hikes yet. So we're still looking at rate cuts. We're just pushing them out a little bit further. So that's kind of the Summary for today, Zach, a pleasure being with you as always. I hope everybody enjoys the rest of the week. For our alert subscribers, uh, we'll have a lot to talk about Thursday night. So uh, uh, I'll leave it to you for the final word, Zach, but uh, take care, everybody. Oh yeah, well, I can't do better than that. As, uh, as always, it's a pleasure. Take care, we'll see you next time.